How's it going? How's the show? Good. It's been super awesome. The keynote announcements went well, I think. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it, was it was nice to see you on stage. Yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. It was fun to go up there. It was great to, uh, great to get a chance to, to hang out and see Mitchell do his thing and everybody else. So it's, it's really great. It's been, it's been great. Like, I think the, the past, few, past few months actually have been pretty exciting for like, all of us. Like, you know, there's been so much interesting things around like Service Mesh. And, yeah. And, and you know things like SMI, the, the yeah, service yeah, yeah. mesh inter interface, which you know we were lucky enough to partner with you. Oh yeah, no, I mean I awesome. we're really grateful. It was it was really a, a fantastic opportunity to come together and, and talk about that stuff. Um, and I think service mesh is sort of entering like the the real phase. Yeah, the, like, <laughs> yeah it looks like like, it. like like no longer the hype phase. Yeah. Um, and and I think it's great to see, you know, the the fact that people are realizing that the abstraction there is necessary. Absolutely. Right? Right. Yeah. And so um, I, I, I love the fact that you were, you were some of the first to see that and to, to help us build the spec. And, you know, obviously it's continuing to evolve. Yeah. I think luckily for us, like, you know, our company did start as like a very cloud agnostic company. We, you know, we support heterogeneous workloads, yeah, yeah. you know. So I think for us, like, you know, for example, the Kubernetes ecosystem is like this huge thing now, right? It's, it's, it's become this, this may really much like a main, main container scheduler that you that you see today and what's interesting is like for us is like there's a huge overlap of users that want to be in kubernetes but they still like the reality is they still have this stuff in vms oh, yeah, or yeah. metal and how do you like you know bridge those together so luckily you know, all our products have always like you know interface everything that way or like face those challenges yeah uh, and you know smi is such a cool interface because like if you are in kubernetes like you still need that like native like CRD model to, to you know control some of these things and this yeah. is like the first thing people said I was like why do I need to go to you know the console UI or the API to do this yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to still use console because I want to still bridge outside of Kubernetes yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think that's been super exciting yeah it's, it's awesome and I think you're absolutely right I think one of the reasons why it's been such a great partnership is because I think we share that notion that like you can't just cloud natify everything yeah it doesn't it doesn't happen it, doesn't, it just yeah. doesn't happen right <laughs> um, and, and so we have to build solutions that work with that person who has the database that finance or Absolutely. SecOps or whatever is like, nope, nope <laughs> that's staying under that person's desk for the rest of the time. That's right? exactly right. Um, and you know, I think that has been the sweet spot for console for a long, even before service mesh. Right. Like, even before service mesh was a thing. Right? I, I think in some ways console was sort of like the service mesh before service mesh. I guess, level, yeah. Right? I think, like, yeah. It, and it came from that, how do I just connect two things? It wasn't like, experiments yeah. and try, I mean, all this, like, we'll throw in the whole kitchen sink. It was, like, literally that problem of, like, thingy over here, thingy yeah. here, how do I make how them talk, yeah. right? And that simplicity is awesome. So where do you think, like, this is an interesting question. I always think about this. Like, now, like, when I look at, like, the landscape, uh, and I'm not meaning the CNCF, like, landscape, the, the whole thing with all the logos. I'm just talking sure. about, this, just, like, overall, like, just, like, in our industry in the past three years. It's like crazy because it's like a sushi menu that you get offered, mm, yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah, oh my yeah, god, yeah. there's hundred choices. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, how do I, how yeah. do I select? So, how does like, how, how, like, how does like the, the AKS team, for example, like go about like, you know, when people come up to you like, we want to use Kubernetes, like, how do right. I get started? How do you go about that side of things? Well, I mean, ultimately, at, at some level, my job is to make sure that those customers are going to be successful, mm. right? No matter so, what like, they no choose. No matter, no matter. Well, not only no matter what they choose, but also, I'm not. I can't. There's a responsibility in suggesting something. Right, because it's going to come back and bite me. Yeah, right? for sure. Like it's going to be like, oh, we went in and we went down that road, and we're in production, and like for we sure. have your telephone number, right? For like, sure. So, so I, I want to see, and this is one of the reasons why I love the managed service, is because, you know, uh, console is a great solution, but the, to be able to say to somebody, not only do we have the solution here, mm -hmm. but the team that built it is standing up behind it mm -hmm. in, a, in a real way, not right. in a like, hey, it deployed in good luck kind of way, <laughs> yeah. like, hey, I slapped some YAML into yeah. a Kubernetes cluster and we're, you know, you're good, right, kind of way, but a real like, you know, you talked about building an SRE team, SRT, yeah. like that whole thing, that's critical to me in making a recommendation um, because ultimately that customer needs to have that confidence. I, I'm a real believer that while Kubernetes and Helm and all these things have been great tools, they've actually been kind of dangerous to people too, because mm. like, it used to be really hard to set something up. Yeah, Like I set know. up a database yeah. or whatever, it was hard. It took a few days and like, by the end you realize that this was kind of a hard thing. And I think the trouble is now people like, they like, cat a bunch of YAML into Kubernetes and I have a three node Mongo cluster and, like, and they're like, and I'm a DBA. And you're yeah. like, no, 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 no you're That's not a DBA, <laughs> right? And, and they, they don't realize it and, and you, they don't have to, 
do that upgrade or whatever yeah. on their way to production. Yeah. And then suddenly they're in production yeah. and there's a security issue yeah. and they need to do an upgrade and they're like, oh wait, yeah. like, How does I'm not a DBA, yeah. how does this work, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I'm a big believer in managed services. Yeah. It's really a proponent of, of that to every customer. You know, whether it's uh, a SQL Server database or you know console managed by by Hashi, like that is that's the sweet spot. Yeah, you know, for me, for sure. and and so um, that helps yeah. for sure in making that recommendation. Yeah, even for um, us, like I think like I work I work in the office of CTO on developer advocacy, and like for us is like you know we've always made these like really like interesting tools in different spaces. Like console like focuses on networking and service discovery and service mesh. Like, and you would have to learn, like for, for me, I had to learn like everything from scratch, from ground up to understand like yeah. what the real problem is. And what's interesting is like, it's not easy to, to, to start off with like, hey, like, you know, take this thing, Helm, install this, and then, you, you know, your service will be, you know, talking to each other without, you know, without any intervention. You have to explain kind of the, the premise of this whole yeah. thing. And what's interesting is like with managed services, for example, like you know, for me the job becomes easier. Like I can, I don't have to teach them how like leader election works, how does like clustering work, yeah, and yeah. how do you like gossip encrypt everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can just be like, okay, this button, push it. You get right. this thing. Now you have a control plane. Right. Now let's talk from then. Then now on. let's focus on your application, which is what they cared about anyway. Yeah, right? exactly. Like, and, and I think that's the other pr promise of the managed services is that it allows those teams to just focus on the app. Like, and I think that's actually something that DevOps kind of confuse people with. Mm. I think, yeah. you know, people said this DevOps thing and they're like, oh, we combine operations of everything and and therefore you have to know from like the kernel all the way up through your app. Absolutely. And like, <laughs> I was actually like, I don't actually think that's the point of DevOps. The point of DevOps was that you operated your app mm. and managed services allow you to like yeah. decouple yourself from For all sure. the rest of it. For sure. Right, so you don't have to become a console expert. You don't have to become a, uh, you know, a kernel expert. You just focus on the software that, that is the thing that you built. Right? Absolutely. And I think that's the true promise of DevOps, actually. Yeah. It's that simplification that comes from that. Yeah. So. And also, I think with, with that, I think I, I'm sure, like, you know, we, we all get asked this all the time. is like, you know, how does security fit into this yeah. whole thing, right? Like, and especially with Kubernetes, it's so interesting. I remember, like, using, like, really early. I was a really early Kubernetes user. Like, it was pretty open inside. Yeah, you know, yeah, there yeah. were no network policies, no yeah, RMAC, yeah, nothing, yeah, right? Like, yeah. it, it worked. But, like, you know, the, the premise of, like, the, the scheduler, like, it solved the problem really well. But then pe people, like, larger enterprises wanted to use it. And it, yeah, the yeah. notion of security came in. And I know, like, there's been, like, super interesting. So where do you see that kind of extent in, inside of Kubernetes? I know there's been, like, super interesting, uh, you know, uh, pro like, really good progress made on, on the CSI driver front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think Azure has a, a secret store CSI yes. driver yeah, that yeah, allows yeah. you to do yeah. Azure Key Vault uh, yeah, secrets yeah, yeah, yeah. into your pod, which is yeah, super yeah. interesting. Yeah. So where do you see that kind of extent as we go on? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, my hope is that we've built the right plugins. CSI is a great example mm -hmm. where we've built the right pluggable interfaces so that people can bring that stuff into places that they need. Um, you know, I think that even before network policy and stuff, you saw like people using CNI drivers mm. to load, you know, uh, uh, someone who could do network policy, you know, right. something that looked like network policy. Right. And I think what you realize ultimately, and you said the same thing about SMI, there is this place where people are suddenly like, oh no, I need, uh, I want it all to be in the Kubernetes control yeah. plane. Yeah. I don't want to have some side control right. plane. And we saw this right. with Helm, right? right. I mean, Helm 2 has a side control plane. Right. And, and you know, Helm 3 gets rid of it because right. people want it to be integrated into the, the tiller server. problem. Yeah, yeah. the tiller problem. Yeah. So I think that there is this mix of we have experimentation mm. and people do stuff, but then we pull it back. But I think the fortunate thing is with the CRDs, you know, we've gotten to a place where you don't have to bring it into the core. Mm. Like, I don't think network policy now, if we were doing it today, you could easily imagine doing it as a CRD, mm -hmm. never part of core the Kubernetes, core, yeah. right? And so I hope that all of this stuff, that's the path that it, that it takes. Yeah. Um, because I think that, that means that sort of innovation can proceed on its own pace without us um, you know, having to stabilize it. Right. I was just talking to you know, the release manager for 1.16 about right. the process of stabilizing. Right. A you know, it's tricky. And, and the, more you, the more soup you throw in, right. like, the harder it it's gets. so and, hard, yeah. And so I like the way that we've, we've put extensibility in there to, yeah. to help with that. Um, yeah. I do also think there's some naivete when we started. Like, you know, I don't think I don't think a lot of us had worked at like a legacy finco. Yeah, you know? that, that like, makes sense. Um, and so that's been an evolution too. And a yeah. lot of partners who have maybe a little bit more of that yeah. enterprise experience yeah. have really helped us see. You know, the Microsoft field actually is great at that too. Yeah. Just like being like, nope. Like, <laughs> you're like, but couldn't? No, you're like, nope. 
nope, that regulator, yeah. that regulator's not moving. So yeah. figure out a way, right? Yeah, I know. I think for us, it's been super nice, as, as you mentioned. Like, I think going back to kind of the CRD model is like super interesting. I, you know, when the CSI driver came out, and of course, like, it was open source. Uh, and, and we had a lot of users, like, a lot of interest in Vault, uh, which right. is our security product. And people are like, no, we want to use like Vault because Kubernetes secrets at that time, you know, you just had yeah, that yeah. one basic option. I'm not going to yeah, say yeah. what it was, uh, but like, you know, the basic option. And on, on the Vault side, like people were already using Vault, and they're like, how do I bring my enterprise store yeah, yeah, yeah. into Kubernetes? And we were like, okay, just use the Vault API. And they yeah. were like, no. But then again, the same problem is like, I want that native experience. How do we do that? Yeah. Luckily, CSI came out after Flex Volumes, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then and then and then we we wrote a Vault provider for the for the yeah. uh, the secret store driver that, yeah, yeah. that Microsoft open source, which is really awesome. Yeah. I think that worked really well because people are like, okay, again, we get that native experience, yeah, yeah, even yeah. though we don't maybe get all the features that we want sure. into it, but then we still get the, the basic function, which is like, I get my secrets as files, I yeah. can read them, my app is not aware about this, like other yeah. secret store that you know we are using. I think the, the CRD model is, yeah. is super interesting yeah, to yeah, kind yeah, of extend sure. that. And I think, that's, I think that's, that's okay. Like, I don't feel like we need to make everything possible. It's like, you, you want to make it the easiest integration possible, and if they need an advanced use case, that's when you say, well, the Vault API is there, mm. or the That's Key Vault right. API That's is right. there, or whatever. Like you know, I think sometimes we, we Get fall into this trap of like, oh, but I didn't expose absolutely everything yeah. into the Kubernetes. It's like, yeah. well, there's a balance. You're always going to have that power user who right. needs to go straight, right? But you're also going to have that user who, who doesn't want to learn very right. much. Who wants to stay in their world and make it just work. Right. right? I right. think it's okay to balance those things. Right. So yeah. my last kind of wanting to like kind of focus on this this interesting thing is like. So I've been involved with Virtual Kubernetes project, sure. for, um, and I provide I added the Nomad yeah, provider, yeah. which is super awesome. It's yeah. two schedulers, and people are like, "Why do you have to do yeah, this?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, "No, we're just showing you how extensible Kubernetes is which, right. with with VK." So I, I wanted to, I know you worked on like really early. I think yeah. it was your like pet project or something. Uh, I, I sort of incubated it. Yeah. Okay, that was that was yeah. super. I think you wrote it in TypeScript. I wrote it in TypeScript, <laughs> yeah, and then they rewrote it. And go. <laughs> I actually is, really like TypeScript. Uh, <laughs> I was a little sad actually that they rewrote it. But, <laughs> You're like, no, uh, before like we open source it. <laughs> I like TypeScript. <laughs> no, I think that that's a, where do you see? It? So I think there's this other like realm of computing, which is for example, I don't, you know, I don't want to use the, the serverless word, but like sure. this 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 container as a service kind yeah. of offering. Yeah. I know ACI is, is yeah. one of the prominent ones, uh, you know, yeah. on the AKS, with, used with complementary with AKS. Yeah. So, like, where do you see, like, do you see the day where, like, you won't not have Kubernetes managed nodes? You'll have a control plane, and you may be running something like VK or something, and then you just get like your containers managed automatically. I, that is my goal. I think. <laughs> um, I mean, I think it's an interesting question. I think that um, you might think some higher level developer experience will replace it all. Mm. Right, yeah. some you know, and I don't think it's functions as a service. Right, I, I don't think there's enough. I think it, that's great for like a certain set of use cases, yeah. but it's not going to go wide. Yeah. Um, but maybe something you know a little bit more pazzy would replace everything, and yeah. you know, it doesn't matter what's underneath the service. Right, right. Um, I don't. That hasn't been what's happened in the history so far. Right. Right. I think actually you've been seeing the opposite, where you're seeing has replatform themselves on mm -hmm. top of Kubernetes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so yeah, I think the Kubernetes orchestration API is probably going to stick around. But I also really strongly believe that the machines need to disappear. Mm. Like, and the At idea, least from a user perspective. From a user like, perspective, uh, right? I mean, I'm not saying, like, that database, yeah. that database may <laughs> always, always. Be on a, always be on a machine, and that's sure. fine, right? Yeah. But, but like, for the developer-oriented primitives, right. for the container-oriented primitives, right. I, the machines, they're not doing much, right, right? And for, for you as a user. In right. fact, in some ways, Kubernetes is trying to hide it from you, except for not really. It's right. like 50-50, right? right? right, right. Um, but it turns out, as we started down the VK project, um, the Kubernetes code base itself actually is sort of really deeply attached to the fact that the machines are there. Mm. There's all these assumptions that, mm. that it makes about even things like just getting logs. Mm -hmm. The code itself just assumes that there's right. some kubelet there that right. it can talk to, right. Right? Right. right? And so convincing everyone and refactoring the code and doing it so that like Kubernetes, the orchestration part, it could be separated from Kubernetes, right. the machine manager right. part, right. 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 is actually a tricky thing to do. Um, you know, I think ultimately it will determine whether Kubernetes sticks around or not mm. at some level, for sure, or whether the system above it just replaces it, for sure, right? I because you can imagine someone coming along and saying, well, I will give you mostly Kubernetes, right. but without the nodes. Right. Um, and, and you know, clearly there's a lot of investment at this point in all the YAML files and all that sort of thing. So like, the API feels pretty sticky. Right. Um, but 
we'll see. It's yeah. going to be. I think that's that's the next five years of evolution. That's going to we'll, really. We'll see where that goes. Yeah, I think it's been yeah. super exciting. Like I'm for, for for my sake. Like I think. I remember like six years ago talking to people about infrastructure and they would just like roll their eyes and yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I would tell them can I buy you a coffee and like let's talk about it because I'm having these problems could you help right, me right, solve right. it they'll be like this is not our problem like you right. know and now people are like meticulously figuring out what CNI plugin they want to use and like it's so awesome yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that this, this is out there yeah no, I think it's fantastic to see I think it's a real I think it's a mature it's a, it's people getting more mature about yeah. how they do this stuff yeah. I think it's, it's yeah. the truth so yeah, that's right, cool. fun talking to you. Absolutely. Thanks for having a great conversation. Yeah. Take care.